This is Oyagen's second in a series of animated features where you will learn of our novel approach to eliminating HIV reservoirs as a novel strategy to cure AIDS. The human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, is the pathogen that causes AIDS. HIV requires the machinery in white blood cells to reproduce itself, so it must fuse and penetrate cell membranes. Once inside, HIV unpackages its two copies of RNA genetic material that will code for viral proteins. HIV reverse transcriptase replicates the RNA genetic material into a strand of DNA while degrading the RNA template shortly thereafter. Reverse transcriptase uses the single-stranded DNA once again as a template for making complementary DNA that will form a viral double-stranded DNA mini-chromosome. Following replication, the HIV mini-chromosome, or proviral DNA, inserts itself into the host cell chromosomes and from this position will give rise to the production of the building blocks for new viral particles. HIV infection can not only lead to the production of viral particles, but beginning very early in an infection, HIV can establish what are referred to as viral reservoirs. Viral reservoirs are cells which harbor the HIV virus but do not actively express viral particles. The formation of reservoirs is believed to be one of the major barriers to eradication. The virus in reservoirs is not replicating and therefore refractory to therapeutics that target viral production. The difficulty in eliminating viral reservoirs stems from the fact that these reservoirs are not producing viral proteins and therefore remain undetectable to the body's immune surveillance system that would otherwise recognize foreign viral material on the surface of these cells and kill them. To accomplish this, patients are treated with hormones known as cytokines or small molecule drugs that can activate gene expression in reservoir cells. One category of these activators is known as histone deacetylase inhibitors or HDAC-I or HDAC inhibitors. Treatments with HDAC inhibitors change the structure of chromosomes such that genes that were once silenced, such as HIV and reservoir cells, now become actively expressed to produce virus. Following activation of the once repressed HIV genome, HIV RNA will be made in the reservoir cells and exported to the cytoplasm, where it will code for viral protein expression and the production of viral particles. The viral proteins that are expressed in activated reservoir cells are identical to those that are expressed in an HIV infection. Viral infectivity factor, or VIF, is one of the viral proteins that is expressed. VIF stabilizes itself by interacting with a cellular protein known as CBF-beta, and then goes on to find and bind to host restriction factor known as ApoBec3G. ApoBec3G, or A3G, is a protein that can serve as our innate defense against HIV infection. When VIF binds to A3G, it tricks our cells into thinking that A3G is debris and induces the destruction of the protein. In this regard, as an eradication strategy, the activation of silent reservoirs has both pros and cons. On the positive side, activation of viral reservoirs will lead to the expression of viral proteins. Some of these proteins will be displayed on the surface of reservoir cells and reveal them to the host immune system, which will subsequently destroy these cells as foreign bodies. A successful eradication strategy that relies on activation of reservoirs must not only accomplish selective activation of HIV genomes, but also must address the question of how can the production of infectious virus be prevented once reservoirs are activated. Oyagen's novel antiretroviral approach protects A3G from VIF. This reduces or eliminates the production of infectious viral particles. We believe VIF antagonists are an ideal eradication strategy when combined with activators of viral reservoirs. One class of antiviral target involves preventing VIF binding to CBF beta. These VIF destabilizers lead to the elimination of VIF from the cell and prevent A3G degradation. 
Our second class of antiviral target involves preventing VIF proteins from interacting. VIF dimerization antagonists also prevent A3G degradation. When VIF destabilizers and VIF dimerization antagonists protect A3G from degradation, A3G will become part of the viral package. Assembly of A3G with HIV is analogous to Greeks entering a Trojan horse because when the virus leaves the producer cell and enters the target cell, A3G is ready and in position for host defense. As reverse transcriptase replicates a DNA copy of the HIV RNA, A3G recognizes hotspots in this new DNA sequence and mutates the code through what is referred to as CDU base modification DNA editing. The mutated DNA serves as a template for second strand viral DNA synthesis by directing G to A base changes in the viral genetic code. The mutated viral chromosome may be destroyed by the cell due to the extensive nature of the mutations, or if the viral DNA is not degraded, the mutated non-pathogenic virus may still integrate with the cell chromosome. The mutations due to A3G can be so extensive that viral RNA cannot code for functional proteins. The spread of infection will stop at this point. VIF antagonists are predicted to increase CD4 cell counts in AIDS patients and have a major impact on treating drug-resistant strains of HIV as part of an antiretroviral drug salvage and rescue approach. Oyogen is a global leader in innovation and development of HIV therapeutics that enable our natural defense, apovec 3 g In development are drugs that destabilize VIF by antagonizing CBF beta binding to VIF. In addition, VIF dimerization antagonists prevent VIF from binding to A3G and destroying our defense. Oyogen proposes that these first-in-class drugs that neutralize VIF when used in combination with other treatments or eradication strategies, are the most rational approach to a cure for AIDS. Please visit Oyogen's website for more information and to learn more about our drug discovery programs.